Sit back and prepare to be scared. Lizzie Borden took an axe and gave her mother 40 wax. When she saw what she had done, she gave her father 41. On August 4, 1892, Andrew and Abby Borden were viciously murdered in broad daylight in their home in Fall River, Massachusetts. Their daughter, Lizzie, was accused of the murders and brought to trial. It turned out to be the trial of the century. Newspapers across the country ran daily updates, and the courtroom was packed to capacity with eager spectators. After three weeks, the jury deliberated for just two hours before announcing their verdict, not guilty. When she heard the verdict, Lizzie fell back in her chair, then put her head on the rail and wept. The courtroom erupted into cheers, and it was said that the jubilant crowd outside the courthouse could be heard a mile away. Lizzie and her sister Emma inherited $350,000 from their father's estate, the equivalent of $10 million in today's money, and purchased a large house in the wealthiest part of town. This raised more than a few eyebrows. Although the majority of residents of Fall River initially supported Lizzie throughout the trial, after her acquittal, many began to ask the question, if Lizzie didn't kill her parents, then who did? And today, 130 years later, we're still asking the same question. The Lizzie Borden case is one of the most famous unsolved mysteries in American history and one that my next guest, Joe DeSantis, has done extensive research on. Joe is the author of the fiction novels Blue Dawn Over Gettysburg, Escape from Devil's Den, and The Dartmoor Horror. His newest book, The Maplecroft Message, is a fictional follow-up to the Lizzie Borden murder case that features the one and only Sherlock Holmes. Joe has had a lifelong interest in the Borden murders, and today he'll share his insights on Lizzie Borden.